10 states yet to conduct local government elections despite aspiration of elected officers. And as we celebrate the world celebrates women, our focus today will be on women in leadership and politics. What are we doing to get more women into public offices? This is Plus Politics and I am Mary Ann Cole. Ten states, including Ogun, Katsina, Anambra, have not conducted elections into local governments despite the absence of elected officers in office of the councils. Uh, recent investigations showed that some of the local governments were being administered by caretaker committees constituted by state governors. To discuss this with me, our legal practitioners, Emmanuel Umorin and Jideo Ologun. It's good to have you join us, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. All right. Um, I'll start with you, um, Barista Umarin. Anambra is yet to hold local government polls since 2013. Um, Katsina local government held its last local government election. Katsina State, I beg your pardon, uh, held its last local government elections in 2014. And um, several other states are on this list. So I'm, I'm trying to understand um, what does the law say about states? that have not had local government elections, for example, since 2013, and this is 2021. Uh, I, I think that we are toying with our future as a country. We play with everything. The fact that state governors are spending funds of the local government that are not constitutional because a local government there's nothing in the constitution that that that, that knows what is called critical committee there's no critical committee in the state level there's no critical committee in the federal government there are three uh, governments in nigeria there's the federal government, there's the state government, and there's the local government. So once you start using unlawful means to run a state, a part of a state, you are breaching the constitution. And anything you do unlawfully, you can be held liable. I don't know why ESCC is not doing what they ought to do in the circumstance. One, all money spent by the local government unlawfully ought to be retrieved from whoever put those people there. That's one. Two, it's an economic crime for you to deprive the people of their constitutional rights to a, an elected person. Three, it's a breach of section two of the constitution, which says that no part of the federal government shall be run without complying with the constitution. It's a coup. It, let's put it, let's call it what, it's a coup. Because if you seize government of any part of the federation without due process. It's a coup. Well, let, let me be And right. you can be tried and sentenced to death. OK. Oh, wow. They would be tried and sentenced. Yes, because the, Constitution, the Supreme Court has consistently held that what the governments are doing is an illegality. But, but then, but they then. They don't have the powers to create critical committees or truncate a local government uh, after it has been elected into office. But then, but, but as long as, as, I mean, I, I hear you, you're saying that it's against the laws, it's against the constitution, 
but governors have been practicing this. And I mean, I just pointed out a particular state has not conducted local government elections since 2013. And there is the EFCC. We have the courts. Nothing has been done. The most that we have heard, Mr. President did at some point say, um, make sure that the local government funds go to local governments. But then in states where there are no local governments, obviously these monies go back, find their way back to the pockets of state governors. So really, how do you even start to deal with this issue? I'm going to you now, um, Barstow Logan. Where do you even start to deal with this issue? Because the federal government uh, has, its, has powers to do certain things, but then it cannot also, um, you know, do the job of states or interfere in states and local government issues? Can it, really? Brilliant question. To start with, let's go back to the Constitution. Section 15, subsection 5 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended says that the states can abolish corruption and abuse of office. <clears throat> and what you see going on in respect of our discussion today is corruption, is abuse of office. Like Barista brilliantly mentioned, all the money that have been expended illegally, so to say, because the Constitution does not recognize caretaker committees running the affairs of local government. In some areas, administrators are even given that responsibility. And there is a decision of the court that says that the state house of assembly, given the governor that authority, cannot stand. But then it is easier for the government to go after individuals and corporate organizations that appear to be corrupt than the, for the government to have an internal mechanism to ensure the government follows the rule of law. And by the way, the president and commander in chief of the armed forces, who also came into the same system, said at a point, and notably at the conference of the Nigerian Bar Association, that the rule of law may be subdued to the interest of national security. And of course, the foundation for security, the foundation for justice, the foundation for prosperity is respect for the rule of law. So when you find a society that has little or no respect for the rule of law, you encounter cases like this. And don't forget also that constitutionally, we have about 774 local government areas in Nigeria. But politically and practically, we have more than that in practice. Mm -hmm. Even though they have been nicknamed a local development authority or whatever the case may be, and in trying to ask the question, who brings the government to order? It is the government, of course. You saw what happened recently in the United States of America. Donald Trump was not happy with the results of the elections. But the system, the institutions, did not kill behind him. They defended the national interest to say, hey, you are the president, but we have a president-elect. They could have mobilized the forces of government to back up the yearnings of Donald Trump. But that is not USA for you. Hmm. And don't also forget that recently we discussed the financial autonomy that local government areas you have, yeah. that they do not enjoy practically, except in theory, because the governor still corners the money that should be left. And that's why the impact of good governance may not be felt at the grassroots level. So, and you know that the local government authority is the closest to the grassroots. So the government is still the watchdog to ensure respect for the rule of law. But there are governments... And we are waiting but there are, and watching. I'm sorry, Barista Logan. There are government mm. agencies that somewhat have a responsibility to make sure that 
if certain things are not going as it should go, I mean, we, we have the likes of Serap, who's always querying the states and federal governments on the duties that they have neglected. But when the likes of Serap bring up these issues, why are our institutions or agencies that are saddled with the responsibility of fact-checking or investigating and making sure that people are brought to book? Why, how come they don't do their jobs? Like the, the likes of EFCC, Barcel Moran did mention that governors are shortchanging the people because as far as I'm concerned, local governments are, are for people who need government the most and people who are at the grassroots who cannot access the state government. In, in, interestingly, we run a system that may be more loyal to individuals or to an office than the nation as a whole. I just mentioned it now. Even the state of the president and commander-in-chief of the armed forces, is guilty of what we are discussing now. And so who is going to ensure that the agencies carry out their functions? You find the DSS that will be reluctant to investigate, identify, prosecute, sponsors of Boko Haram, but will be full of adrenaline to go after somebody calling for good governance in the guise of seeking to carry out a revolution. We have found ourselves in a situation where we have agencies, government agencies that are negotiating with bandits, that we go after peaceful NSAS protesters, but cannot go after bandits, claiming that the bandits are wearing military camouflage. So, Going to so these are these are realities of our country, mm. and that is why we should not be surprised that we have been tied down by the consequences of governance failure. Mm. I just gave us an example now of the U.S. The totality of the system will be loyal to the nation. It's mm. not about whether Donald Trump is a rich man or is president. No. If you monitor very well the judiciary, the legislative arm, all of them rose up to say, no, we cannot put America to ridicule. So you can imagine that that election took place in an African country. Okay. Definitely Joe Biden won't be in office now. Okay. Let Perhaps me... that region will be in serious bloodshed now. All right, Barisa. Look at when let... the capital Barisa, I'll, come back to, I'll come back to you. Let me just go back to um, Barisa Moran. Now, Barisa Moran, you, you started by um, letting us know that caretaker committees are not recognized by the law. So what is the role of the House of Assembly, all the Houses of Assembly, in the set states where they have had, they have had several caretaker committees come and go? And many people have decried this movement of caretaker committees that they are mostly made up of stooges of the governors that are in power. Again, there's a 2016 judgment uh, of the Supreme Court which voids laws uh, um, enacted by the state's houses of assembly uh, that empowers governors to sack elected local government chairmen and councillors and replace them with Ketika committees. So if we have these things in place, what is happening with the state's houses of assemblies? Because of course, these are pe people who are supposed to checkmate um, the state governors. Yeah, you know, the, the fact of it is that we have uh, we don't have a democracy in this country, to be honest. Um, you you have states where, well, it's even better outside Lagos State because it's very difficult for you to come from another local government in other states and contest election as local government chairman in uh, another local government. But what you have in Lagos State, you can be brought from anywhere and made a local government chairman in Lagos. But the more important thing is this. We run, we have governors who are lawbreakers. That is all you, you say. And unfortunately, we don't have security agencies who want to work. Now, what stops the police, the EFCC, from going after a governor who breached who the, who the, who breached the, 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 the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And despite the fact that the Supreme Court has said that 
these acts are unlawful, unconstitutional. Now, there are various steps to this. If you spend government money on unlawfully, unconstitutionally, it is a you have committed a crime because the only thing you can do with government funds is do, do it lawfully. If you bring somebody who is not supposed to be in office and put him in a position where he ought not to be, where the law is clear that it should be by election, it's like if the president decides tomorrow to remove the governor of the Anambra state and, and, and appoint uh, a, a sole administrator, <laughs> all the governors will start screaming. It's not, it's not constitutional, legally it is, unacceptable. It can't but even happen, that can it? It's the same thing that the governors are doing. It's the same thing. So what stopped the president? from removing the governor of Anambra State tomorrow because he said something that he doesn't like. Now, you asked about the state's house of uh, assembly. They are not houses of assembly anymore. You recollect that the only state's house of assemblies that have tried to query the, the governors were the state house of assembly where the president caused the EFCC to go and arrest the majority of the members and carry the other people to Abuja to impeach the governors. That was Bayelsa State and Plato State. So, look at what is happening in New York. Governor Como, members of his party are asking him to resign or they may set up an impeachment, uh, set, set an impeachment procedure against... That was the most powerful governor Last year, in America, the only governor that, could, that stood up to the president of America today, barely one year after, because of his failings in life, he is under attack even by his members of his party who are asking him to resign. The Speaker of the House, uh, of, who is a member of his party, who is a Democrat, has asked him to, the leader of the House has asked him to resign. Can you have that in Nigeria? The reason for this is this. People who call themselves political godfathers, they don't want people who are independent to go near office because they want to control the people who are in office. You see a governor will fight tooth and nail to make sure his successor is somebody who has, who has sworn loyalty to him. And at the end of the day, what happens to us? The governors are getting richer, the country is getting poorer. All the governors who in 1999 could not buy themselves two cartons of beer today are drinking wines and brandies that are worth 650,000 naira. Okay. We're, there... all here. We're old enough to know. We knew so a lot of them. Okay. from different states. We knew them um, uh, who were in practice when they were, when they were, when they were strong, when they were in, in outside. But between 1999 and today, they have become billionaires. Well, that, that, uh, that's a conversation for another day. Let's continue talking about this local government. Um, back to you, Barista Logan. In Sakoto, the PDP um, there said that the delay was purely political. Um, they said it had, they had issues with zoning, and then there were other factors that you know were thrown into the mix, um, but they have fixed March twenty um, seventh for the March twenty seventeen uh, twenty seven rather for the elections now. But in Katsina, um, since Governor Masari became the governor since he assumed office uh, in twenty fourteen, he's not conducted any local government election. In fact, it seems to be you know very okay with the people. Could the reason why these governors are doing this with so much disregard be that the people themselves are not educated enough to understand? And when I'm talking about education here, I'm not talking about formal education, I'm talking about voter education. Maybe the people are not um, educated enough to understand the powers and the duties of local government authorities to them, 
Hence the reason why um, maybe there's not an outcry of sorts from these states where their local governments have not been empowered or there have not been a local government elections. And of course, there are RECX, or rather um, state electoral um, commissions in all of these states. How come these electoral commissions are not pushing for these elections to happen? Basically, a, a man said that excuses will prevent you from making effort. And that is where we are now. And some are blaming the cases in court from opposition. Some are even blaming COVID-19 that came in 2020. And some are blaming paucity of funds, different kinds of excuses. But I can let you know that the relevance of the local government authority started getting eroded years back. You just mentioned the northern part of the country. It may amaze you that the local government system in those communities may just be for maybe the chairman to come around when there is allocation and politically appropriate the allocation and disappear from that local government to the, either the state capital in fact, it may shock you that there is a local government chairman in Zampara State, for instance, that prefers to live in Victoria Island in Lagos and goes back to appropriate allocation. So we are not serious about governance. We are not serious about developing the country. And when the governors also can use it as a political tool, to dictate who becomes chairman. They will want to manipulate. Don't forget that Africans love power and authority. And on who we challenge this unconstitutional action? They come in also, but there are several of these actions that are going on. And if the National Assembly is serious-minded enough, why don't you come up with stringent laws and oversight follow-up? to ensure that the executive arm implements these laws. But we have gross disregard for judicial decisions, for constitutional provisions, and we think it's a funny matter. It's not at all. So for whatever reason that they are giving the excuses, they are taking good governance away from the grassroots. And that is one of the reasons why we are the capital of poverty. I recall by the grace of God, and um, over 54, when we were younger, in fact, we were so remotely concerned about the state government. In our local community, we had primary schools, secondary schools, maternity center. We have sanitary officers who we come inspecting. We, we, we could touch government. We could touch, we could see government. And that is why the central government is under serious harassment from the people. In fact, for quite a number of Nigerians, it's as if the only government in Nigeria is the federal government. But no, there are tiers of government, the federal, the state, and the local government. But when they lose their relevance, what happens? And those at that level are even afraid to defend their mandate. You may now want to go and help this local government chairman that, hey, can we, can we give you support as a civil liberty organization? They will say, no, 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 no. We are comfortable with Tito. And those who are given the, the palliative privilege of being caretakers will be so happy that hey, they are also partaking in the political duty of the nation. And it's unfortunate. Um, finally, uh, by Salmoran, this question's for you. With all of the conversation that we've had today, it, it shows that the future may just be bleak because um, government agencies are not doing their jobs, the watchdogs are not necessarily watching or you know, bringing anybody to book. Um, will the message of local government autonomy ever resonate with governors in Nigeria? Will there be a time with what we have, I mean, with the realities on ground, will there ever be a time where state governments would accept local government autonomy and, and allow local governments to be run as it should be constitutionally? It's, it's difficult to, to think because 
um, you see, there is a major problem we have in our country. Our constitution was not taught how to work. This idea of the federal government giving money every month to state governments, to local governments, cannot help. This free money is, is, is killing us. So what are you suggesting? I'm suggesting that you determine a local government by the capacity of the local government to govern itself. Or a state government by the capacity. Because when people come to look, there was a government in California that went bankrupt. The state, the city of Detroit went bankrupt. When you have probably the situation where you feed somebody and you, and you cannot teach the person to, to fish, you have a man whose mouth will always be open looking for, for, for handouts. That is the major problem we have. If you have a, a man who is a local government chairman and knows that he has the responsibility to, to generate funds in the local government, he will not allow this to happen. Interesting. I that, I, that is the problem. Well, unfortunately, we have to wrap up this conversation. It, it's sad that we have to wrap up on this note because it looks like there is not really a headway in dealing with this situation. So that means that the people at the local government levels will still continue to get the wrong, uh, the short end of the stick. Thank you very much, Barista Gide Ologun and Barista Emmanuel Moran for being part of this conversation. We appreciate it. Thank you. God bless Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll take a short break. And when we come back, we're still in the spirit of the season of women. Yes, we're still in the month for women. So we'll take a short break. And when we come back, we'll talk about the exploits of women in leadership and politics. Stay with us.